Take a second here. Uh, today's the last week of this series that we're in called The Patterns of Jesus and just kind of different spiritual disciplines. And, um, and the, so next week we're going to dive into this new series called The Questions We Don't Want to Ask. So uh, there's questions I think that some of us don't want to ask God or we don't want to ask you know, a spiritual leader. And so that's going to be what we dive into next week. But uh, today, let me ask you a question. How many of you often feel impatient? Do you often feel impatient? Like, you know, uh, and the sad part about that is we often feel most impatient with, the, with those that are closest to us. That's, that's the thing, is that we're often, that, and I, or in my case, I'm very impatient in my vehicle. So, like, I, I, I'm... I'm I'm very impatient with those that are close to me, and I'm very impatient with those that are outside of my vehicle that don't know how to drive. And so that could be one of you. I mean, I, you know, it it's, wouldn't surprise me, I don't think. But, but I, I will tell you is that I don't, and I don't do well with certain other things too. I don't do well with squeaks, right? If you ever get in the car and there's a rattle in the car, don't do well with it. And, and, and it could be kind of a truce, like a, a, a associated with this, but I, I don't know. I know that uh, my impatience will often lead to me being angry, and that, and uh, and then that anger often leads to me wanting to take revenge. You know, uh, so it, it's kind of a vicious cycle, and um, and 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 I think that God has called us to do something that is better than what we've been doing. He's been called, He's like, hey, you got to you got to tra- you got to change this. And I, and I think that if we started following what, what God asked us to do in the spiritual discipline that, that Jesus showed us, it would actually lead to transformation in all of our relationships, not just our relationships at home, but all of them. You know, um, years and years ago, anybody, uh, well, you may have experienced it, but I definitely experienced it. As a kid, we used to drive down the road, we'd take these long family trips, and we'd get in the car, and I would start doing, are we there yet, are we there yet? Anybody ever experienced that? Maybe you had a child, or you know, maybe you were a child that was the one that was doing that. Well, I remember very clearly that my mom told me, no, we're not there, and if you ask me again, I'm gonna leave you here, and then you'll be there, right? <laughs> and, and I said, ah, oh, I don't think you're gonna do that. And, and my mom was, uh, my mom, it took a lot to get her to where she was really angry enough to, to like, uh, let me find something to beat you with. Uh, it took a lot to get her to that point. But at, I think at that point, I got her there, right? <laughs> because she pulled the car over and walked off. The, I was like, I don't know where she's going. And like, I was like, she got to go to the bathroom? What's going on here? Like, I was sitting in the back, and we drove this. She had this 1978 station wagon, this Chevy station wagon. And so she came back, and she had a switch. And she was... She was like, get out of the car now. And I said, I said, oh. <laughs> She's like, you have tested my patience today. And you've taken me to this level. And she said, get out of the car now before I beat you in the car. And I said, okay. And so as I got out, <laughs> in the midst of me getting out, something overcame her. And she said, and like, I, I remember this day very clearly because she said, God, please help me forgive him before I kill him here on the side of the road. And then she said, get back in the car. And I never said another word for the rest of that trip. <laughs> Not another word. I, it was like the, the, the most, the, the most life changing thing that I ever watched my mom do go from just pure, just like you could just see it, the anger in her to, to where she was just completely calm. And it, it, it terrified me more, actually, to be honest with you. And so as we drove the rest of the way, I remember when we got there. I didn't even ask, are we here yet? You know, I didn't ask then when we, when we pulled into the parking lot of where we were going. But I will tell you, the, the reason why I bring this up is because I think that for her, and I think for a lot of us, losing your patience is something that can very easily be corrected by God. Can very easily be corrected by, see, when we lose our patience, we often do it at work, with a family member, maybe even with our child that's running away from God maybe with our spouse that's not a Christian, maybe that there's something out there that's challenging, maybe it's something that we're making unwise decisions, but it's easy to lose our patience at that point. And here's what scripture says. Scripture says, better is a patient, patient man than a warrior, 
a man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. That's Proverbs 16, 32. It's better to be patient than it is to be angry. That's better to be patient than it is to be argumentative. It's better to be patient than it is to be controlling. It's better to be patient than to be a fighter. And I think that a lot of us, and, I, and I'm just going to tell you now, I'm that person I don't have a lot of patience, and I'm definitely an immediate gratification person. I want it now, and I want it yesterday, and I, and I, want, it, I want it even faster if I could get it. I, like, Amazon was made for me. I ordered something this morning that's going to be delivered to my house at 5 o'clock today. That's how I want things. I want it now. And, and I think that most of us are that way. You know, just think about it. Anybody remember, so, uh, anybody remember when AOL first came out? Do you remember when you would download a photo? You would be on that 56K modem, you would hit, like you'd see an email come up and it'd be somebody that sent you, and it'd be some, sometimes it was some stupid photo, like a dog that had a smile or whatever, and great. But the problem is you wouldn't know until the next morning sometimes, because you would hit download and you'd be like, oh, well, I'm gonna be, I'll be back. Now, today, you, if, if your movie starts to buffer, you're like, what's wrong with the internet? I mean, just think about it. From, from when you first started on the internet to today, do you see how, you're, see how we've been trained that we have to have things higher speed? You were waiting sometimes eight, nine hours for a photo to download. Now you're upset that the movie had a small buffer in the middle of it as you were trying to download a six gig movie and watch it on your Apple TV. I'm just telling you, it's transformed us. And, and see, the thing is, is that there's an example for us out there that says, hey, it's better to be patient. It's better, that, that don't get angry over these things. Don't get argumentative. Don't, get, don't become controlling because it's actually gonna make things worse when you do it. How many of you have had your patience tested in the last month? Anybody had your patience tested in the last month? I know I have. I, I, I mean, it just happens. I, uh, my family and I, we tend to, like, we think that our way of connecting with our family is taking trips. And so we have yearly passes to go to Disneyland. And I was just telling somebody this morning, on our, when we go to Disneyland, it's like the park, they just can't seem to put enough people in the park. They're like, hey, let's just, let's see how full we can make it before people get really angry. And, and I'm the person that it's already too full. And so, like, when you walk, though, the thing that I hate is when people just stop and they want to admire, but they're in the middle of the walkway and then they open up a map. And, and in the past, I would say something about this. In the past, I would be like, uh, you need to move. Or I would get behind them and I would yell in their ear or I would scare them or I'd do something. Get out of the way. I would do things that were terrible. And, 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 and I don't know if I was helping them, but it helped me. <laughs> and see, the thing is, is that I've realized now that some of people, it's their first time ever walking into the park. It's literally, that they've, and they've spent a lot of money to be there. Like they, they, and I, I've been there plenty of times. Well, it may be somebody's very first time that they walk in, and they're literally trying to take it all in. They're trying to experience this. And here I am, this, this, this ogre that shows up behind them and goes, what are you doing? You know, like, I mean, could you imagine? They go back to, from Disneyland that day, and they go, I went to the most magical place on earth for kids and this ogre terrified me out of nowhere. I did not sign up for that. I'm ruining somebody's vacation for something that I've been there several times because I'm impatient, because I don't want to deal with this. I, I, and I know, <laughs> and I know that, that for me, it's a learning experience. And I think for some of you, it's the same thing. Maybe, but maybe for some of you, there's somebody in your life that's testing your patience. Like, like my wife, for example, I make it a mission to test her patience. I do it all the time. And just ask her about it, she'll tell you. you well, or maybe for you, you may be wondering, why won't that person do the right thing? Or why won't he apologize? Or why doesn't my boss recognize my talent? Or why do I put up with this? You know, let me go back to the memory. Let me go back to the verse that we're talking about here. It says, better a patient man than a warrior, a man who controls his temper than one who tries to take a city. 
See, this, new, this other verse complements what the, the, our key verse back here. And so when you look back at this in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. So as you hear this, just go back to these things where, where Scripture has given you clear instruction here. And scripture's going, <sighs> encourage the timid. Be, you know, help the weak. Be patient with everyone. And make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong. Let's just ask this. How often are you helping the timid? How often are you encouraging those that are struggling? How often are you patient with everyone that's around you? How often are you doing these things? Because if you're not, then you're not helping them grow and you're, not, you're probably not growing. Why is patience better? Why is patience better? If you're following along in your notes, Patience is better because a patient person can help heal a broken relationship. You can help heal a broken relationship if you're patient. See, here's what it said, Proverbs 15, 18. It says, a hot-tempered man stirs up dissension, but a patient man calms a quarrel. Think about that. If you are, if you are out there and you are impatient and you continue to, like, you know, and, I'm, and I'll just tell you, I've been through plenty of meetings where I've met with city officials, where I've met with different, uh, different organizations, and I have not been very patient in those meetings. There's been times where I was on a, they've kicked me off pretty much every homeless uh, meeting that there is because I used to tell them, all we do is meet and we don't do any work. I don't understand what's wrong with us. Let's go do some of the work. And so they just start kicking me off those different things. They were like, yeah, we don't want you here because uh, we like meeting. And I wanted to do the work, but the problem was I wouldn't say it very nicely. I would say things that would not, that would, they were not helpful to discussion, but they ended up becoming quarrelsome. And see, if I would have just been patient, it probably would have, I, I probably could have calmly directed the conversation that was happening here. You know, look at, if you go back into, if you go back into Genesis, we can look at Joseph and his brothers. If anybody had a right to be angry, it was Joseph. Joseph gets sold into slavery, right? And by pure chance, he's in Egypt, and, and, he, and he ends up getting connected, and he ends up getting, the, and, and so all of a sudden, his brothers show up after he's been promoted to the king's right-hand man, the pharaoh's right-hand man, and all of a sudden, his brothers show up. He could have enacted revenge and, and I feel that maybe he probably should have. Like, I, I think that, that, hey, that's, you know, but what we do see is we see forgiveness that happens out of this. We see, we see that he forgives. He waited and he forgave. And even though he may not have come out right away and told him who he was, he offered forgiveness as through patience. Could you imagine for years the time that he was in slavery and the time that he was, sla that he was incarcerated? Could you imagine how angry you would be that your brothers did that to you? Could you imagine how, how difficult you would be going through this? And here he is. He goes, I'm going to forgive for this. I'm going to use what the enemy meant for evil. I'm going to turn this into good. And, and see, we don't do those things. We don't. Like, I look back at these things, and I've told you guys, I've had the opportunity to wear the, the matching bracelets once or twice, maybe three or four times. Uh, but here's the thing is that every time that I've gone through it, it's been one of these lessons. Every time that I've had, have, had a conversation or had somebody, I remember, I remember clear as day when the police showed up to the house and after I glued all the mailboxes shut in the neighborhood, that's what I did. I went out and I took mail, I took, took super glue and every mailbox that was in our neighborhood, I, I, I glued it shut. And, uh, and here, the, the best part about this, my mom worked for the post office. And so when the police showed up at the house, they were like, it wasn't very hard to figure out who did this because every mailbox is glued shut except yours. And so, but the thing, I remember them telling my mom, that they said, we will give you a set of handcuffs if you just promise to cuff him to the bed and not let him out. Like, I was like, wow, like, I think they're serious. 
But, but see, to go from that until today, like those stories, I, like I, I know pastors that have never done anything wrong in their lives. They, I, I, like I talk to them, well, they, they tell you they have never done anything wrong. I'm sure they have. But I've talked to them, and, and I feel like, I go, dude, I cannot relate to you. I can't. I don't, I don't relate to you at all. And it makes it to where, how are we reaching broken people if we don't relate to them? I am broken. By the way, guys, you should know that. I am broken, and God had tons of patience with me to get me here. I went through all kinds of things to get where I'm at right now because God was patient with developing me. Because I could have learned then, and I didn't. And I couldn't have learned the next time, and I didn't. And I couldn't have learned the next time after that, and I didn't. I didn't learn until much later in life. But God was patient with me the entire time, allowing me to restore relationships, allowing me to heal, allowing me, and see, God changed my heart through his patience, and he healed my broken relationship with him. See, we have to get better at being patient with people around us, even though they make mistakes, even though they, they do things, and we go, why did you do that? Because as we're patient with them, and as we guide them, and as we love on them, they can transform. I'm telling you, there are people out there that we do not realize that they could possibly be the next Billy Graham if we gave them an opportunity. But we're just not being patient with them. We just cast them off. We just go, well, I'm just going to discard you and not think that you're worthy because we're, un we're not willing to give them the time that God says that they deserve from us. And we just, we, just, we just give them up on them. See, the other thing that can happen, it's through patience, a ruler can be persuaded. Somebody can be persuaded through patience. It just takes time. You, you know, it's, it just, it, it's, it's not always immediate. We want the immediate gratification. We want that photo downloaded now. We want that movie now. We want, we want it now. We're unwilling to wait. But through patience, we can see things change. And we can see things that, we can see <sighs> transformation. And we miss out on a lot of that. Number two, if you're following along, a patient person gives God time to work. And it says in Psalms 27, 14, it says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. See, Jesus didn't give up on people. He didn't write off the woman at the well for her moral life. He didn't blackball the tax collector. He, he, he didn't ban Peter for his denial. He loved, he forgave, and he waited on God to do his work in them. That's what he did. And over time, God changed those lives and many more. See, what you got to think about this is that through Jesus' patience at that time, your life has been changed. Your life today has been changed because of the patience from back then. And, and I don't think that we realize it. See, it's too often what we'll do is we'll open up Scripture and we'll look at something and we'll go, that doesn't relate to me. That's not me. I don't, I don't know how, that, we, we don't see how it's living, how it's breathing, and how it connects to us. We look back and I go, that's a story for a different time, a different era, a different group of people. And it's not, it's for you. That what, what happened then and what's going on now through that patience is all of that is for you today. So those stories, you have to plant yourself in the middle of those oftentimes. And so you can't see yourself as Jesus. So don't ever open it up and be like, well, I'm, I'm gonna be Jesus in this part of the story. Because you're not. But oftentimes, think of yourself as the tax collector. Think of yourself as the immoral, the, the immoral woman at the well. Think of yourself as the broken person that's in that, in that situation and look and go, where would I need Jesus at in this situation? Would I need Jesus to stand up for me at the well? Would I need Jesus to stand up for me as, as I'm up in the tree and I'm trying to just have a glimpse of Jesus, trying to reach to him, trying to connect to him? Where do I need Jesus to connect to me at in this story? Because that's what Jesus is trying to do with us. Jesus is trying to connect with you in a real, and a real, and a manifest his, his will in your life, but you have to connect with him. You have to embrace the stories and you have to dive into it and you have to go, I am that one that's in need. I am that person that's struggling. I am that sinner. I am the one that is just trying to get to his cloak to seek that forgiveness. I am that person. 
And see, when we see that, we'll see that his patience is what's allowing him to work in your life. As you start to develop through that, as you start to see this, you'll see, man, this is for me. I think too often we read it and go, that's for 2,000 years ago, and we forget that it's for us today. We forget that it's for us today. It, it's, see, Jesus didn't give up on people back then. He's not giving up on people today. Jesus didn't give up on the immoral back then. He doesn't give up on the immoral today. Jesus doesn't blackball those today just like he didn't blackball them back then. He didn't do these things. He doesn't ban us from heaven. He, he loves, he forgives, and he continues to try and work in your life. You just have to be willing to accept it. You just have to be willing to go, hey, and, and see, once we start doing that and we start seeing, because I will tell you, there has been plenty of times as I've connected with people and as I've tried to, guys, when you do the ministry that we do, it's, there's often times you go, I just don't know what God is trying to show me through this. I just don't understand. I don't understand what God's trying to do. There's often times where I want to give up, I, especially doing homeless ministry. There's often times I want to throw my hands up and go, I just... I, God, I'm obviously the wrong person for this and I can't help them. I, I come off and, I, and I, there's times where I go, I probably shouldn't be doing this ministry today because right now I'm just not in the right mental space to be able to continue to do this because I don't see the progress in people's lives and I struggle with that and it takes me and it, and it breaks my heart. But I know that God is going, be patient. Be patient, I'm doing a work. Just like I did a work in you that took years, Mike. That's what I have to tell myself. It took years for God to get a hold of me and to change my life. It wasn't overnight. It didn't happen in a week. It didn't happen in a year. It definitely didn't happen in five years. It didn't happen in 10 years. It took time for God to get a hold of me and go, what's wrong with you? Let's do this. And see, that's the same thing. And so when we go, it takes a year, or when we put timelines on things, it makes it to where it's very difficult. Ah. <sighs> Here's what it says in Romans 8, 25. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we will have it when we wait patiently. See, this, if you look at this statement, if you pray for it, if you're asking God for it, if you spend time with God for it, be patient with it. See, anybody, you guys know, anytime you ask for something, God always answers, right? God always answers. You may not like the answer, but God always answers. You know, like I always tell people, it's usually one of three answers, right? It's usually yes, no, not yet. Yeah, right? It's yes, no, not yet. And, and here's the thing. I remember, <laughs> I remember January 2011, and uh, uh, Melissa and I, we've been in prayer we're going, hey, we're going to plant a church, we're going to start this church, and we're going to, we're, we're going to reach this community. That's what we're going to do. And, uh, I, I, and I, I thought for sure God was like, yes, do it. I had lots of confirmation from people. Everything was like, hey, that's the step that we're supposed to be going. But our first Sunday, 12 people showed up, 12. And four of them were my family. They had to be there. They were, there was just no ifs, ands, or buts. And so... I looked at, and I, as we left that day, I asked Melissa, I said, are we really supposed to be doing this? Are we really supposed to be doing this? Is this what God, and, and see what I, I think, I think that day, God said not yet. Because I was like, hey, put up 200 chairs, this is what we need to do, and God said not yet, because you're not ready for that yet. You're not ready for that. You're not ready to pastor a church of 200. You're not ready for those things. And see, for me, I didn't like that answer. I didn't like the answer of going not yet. And I think a lot of us, we don't like that answer of not yet. I think what all of us are looking for, but I asked you, and your word says, if I have just a, a mustard-sized seed worth of faith, that you'll answer and you'll give me a yes. And that's what I went in with, and yet I didn't get that prayer answered, or I was told not yet, or I was told to wait. Or I was told to just continue to struggle or just continue to go on and just continue to go week for week for week without seeing growth and without seeing progress, but the growth was happening in me, not in the amount of people that were in the seats. It was, I was growing at the time. And so God was working on me. God was working through 
working through the circumstance that I was looking at and going, God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why we're not seeing fruit. I don't know what's happening here. And he was like going, because I'm growing you right now to make it to where you can do that, to where you can be that pastor, to where you can teach. Because I will tell you, you can go back and watch those sermons. All of them are on YouTube, and they are terrible. <laughs> That's the reason why we weren't growing. I was not growing as a leader because we, I was preaching messages where I was talking about things that people were like, that's gross, we're leaving. And so that was just, that's how it was. So God was growing me and teaching me. There's, there, God, you have no idea. At every board meeting, I have to ask the, our board members and I have to go, how's the teaching been? Because what I was at compared to where I'm at today, you just ask my in-laws. They'll, just tell, they'll be just completely honest with you. They'll be like, it was terrible. We, we came to support our daughter, not you, because it was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> better is a patient man than a warrior a patient man than an angry fighter <sighs> wait for it patiently guys wait for it patiently what's the other reason why why because god will help heal a broken relationship because you're giving god the time to do the work but the other reason is because god has been patient with you god has been patient with you it says do not forget this one thing dear friends with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. And the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come into repentance. Here's the thing. God has been waiting for some of you to truly repent. God has been waiting for you to truly go, I surrender. God has been waiting for you to truly go, you're in control. God has been waiting for you to just come and go, I can't keep doing what I'm doing, and I need you to take over. God has been waiting for you to just go, I'm ready to be yours. And he's been patient. He's been patient. Some of you have been coming here for years. God's still been patient with you, waiting for you to go, all right, I'm ready. Some of you have just been coming here for a few weeks. Maybe you walked in today. Maybe you just happened to tune in on YouTube today. Or you're watching at home and you're just like, but God has been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and for like his day, this could be a thousand years. And you're just sitting there and, he, and, and yet God's going, all I want you to do is come and live for me. That's all I want you to do. I don't, I don't want you to think about all the things that this world has put upon you. I don't want you to think about all of the, the things that you think you need to do, all of the things that the, the world has said, this is what you have to do to be successful, this is what you do to have money, this is what you have to do to, 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 to have this glory on earth, because none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you're serving him and you're following him and you're just doing what he's asked you to do. It's the only thing that matters. Everything else Everything else, and I'll tell you, success sometimes comes with that. It's a byproduct of following Jesus. It is. But God has been patient. He's been patient with you. You, you know, he's never showed up, and, he's, and I'll tell you right now, he's never, he never, you never saw him on the side of the road with a sign that says you're going to hell. You never saw him on top of a freeway with a sign that says no Jesus, no hell. You know, you never saw any of those things. All he's ever said is, I'll just be here waiting for you to accept me. That's all he's done. He's never tried to bully you into it. He's never said, you must follow me. He says, he said, in fact, he just asked. He said, follow me. Follow me. And too often, we tell him no. Too often, we know what the right thing is to do. Too often, we know what the right thing is to do in a decision when it, something important comes up and we go, oh, I don't want to do that, that's too hard. Or that's going to be difficult. Or that's going to be something that's going to, it's just going to take longer to do it that way. To do the right thing is often hard. And, and, and Jesus has just continued to be waiting for you to do the right thing. He's just going, hey, just follow me. Just follow me. And everything else will tend to start falling in place. And so, I'm going to ask you, maybe for some of you, it's the first time that you'll accept Jesus, and maybe for some of you, it's the 
15th time. I don't know. But maybe today it'll stick. And maybe today you'll walk out of here and you go, today will be different. Today I'll listen to the soft, subtle voice that I hear in my ear telling me, nope, that's the wrong thing to do. And I'll start doing the right thing. And I'll do the often harder thing that's right than, than the easy way that leads us into trouble. See, most of us, we've taken the easy route. We've taken the shortcut. We've taken the, 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 the path that's the wide and that often leads to a, to a place of destruction rather than the hard, narrow road that leads to, to paradise and to Jesus. And so I'd ask you to pivot. I'd ask you to accept the patience that God has bestowed upon you and just going, I've been waiting for you and waiting for you. And I would say, get on the path that leads to the narrow gate that leads to heaven. I, I, it is my deepest desire for each of us in this room. I would love, and I know that in heaven we'll get to recognize one another. And I'd love to be able to say that all of us are there together. That we're all hanging out. That we all just go, man, you remember those days when we were in soon, when we were hanging out? And we were, we were listening to Mike talk about poor jokes from stage. It would be great. <laughs> but I, th that's, what I'm, that, that's my deepest desire for all of us to be in heaven together. It, it's just one of those things. And I feel, guys, I, I, I know that a lot of us were just going, Mike, I'm just trying to survive. But I promise you, if you do it with Jesus, it's easier. I promise you. I promise you, if you live if you live the path that he's put before you and you just make the decisions and you listen to him, because so you have to slow down and you have to be patient and you have to just be willing to listen to the soft and, and, and the stillness and you have to be willing to, to just go, hey, it's gonna take a little longer. But if you do that, it's worth it. It's worth it, I promise you. And if not, when we get to heaven, you can be mad at me there. Let's pray. Father, uh, I don't know where anybody's at in this room today. I don't know where their heart is with you. But I think that all of us need to take this opportunity and just go, we want to get right with you. We, wanna, we, we may have made some bad decisions. We may have made some decisions that we look back upon and we go, I could, I could do that differently or I could have did that with more grace or I could have had more patience or I could have loved better or I could have just been a better servant. And Father, we ask for that forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness today for those, for those past transgressions, the ones that we don't even know that we did, the ones, the things that we look back and we go, I don't even know that I made a mistake there or I did those things. And so Father, we just ask for forgiveness there. And we ask that the sins that we do know about, that you'll forgive those as well. The ones that we, where we, where we lied about something or we cheated on our taxes or we, or we, just, we just did a deal benefited us rather than benefited your kingdom. Father, we ask for forgiveness. Father, we ask for forgiveness for the path to destruction that is in our wake. So many of us have done so many things that's, in, that's behind us that, that we look back upon and go, God, I, I thank you for having patience on me because I, there's, there's just so much that's back there that whether I got caught for it or I didn't, or, but please forgive me for that too. Father, your word says that if we come to you and we ask for forgiveness, that you'll forgive us, that you'll give us new life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, to all who ask for forgiveness and seek truly in our hearts that new life will be given. And Father, we're asking for that new life. We're asking for that newness with you. We're asking for that new relationship that to have all of the 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 past transgressions in the book of life to be erased and just a blank page that says Jesus covered it. Father, we, we ask for a new heart a new, that, that feels how you feel for people and, and, and new eyes that sees people how you see them and just this new gift to be able to, to love as people are broken where they're at just because you loved each one of us when we were broken, where we were at. And so, Father, we ask that we know that some of us, we've just had that brokenness going, and, and we ask for forgiveness for it because we want that new life with you. We want that newness that you promise. We want that, that weight that we've been carrying 
those sins that we've been walking away, that we've been walking in and out of here with to just be cast away and to have a newness with you. Keeping your heads down. If you just prayed that with me, if you prayed that you wanted that newness, that you wanted a new start, that you wanted the, the past transgressions to be erased, and even if you've done this once or twice or 200 times, would you put a hand up for me? Just saying, I'm ready for, for newness. I'm ready for a new beginning. I'm ready for this new life that you promised, this new love that you, that you say that you're going to give in our heart, that, you're gonna be able to, that we're going to go out and do this new thing. You're doing a new thing with each one of us. You can put your hands down. Thank you so much. I know that, I know that a party is happening in heaven right now for each one of us that has a hand up, each one of us that, that just even made that slightest, that slightest move or that change in our heart that, that our father is going, it's time to kill the fattened calf and to throw a party. To welcome home the one that was lost but now has been found. Father, all of us, we've, you've been patient with all of us. And as we walk out today, help us to see that you're patient with all of our brothers and sisters that are out there. They just haven't found you yet. And it's our job to help them, to guide them, to breathe, to breathe your encouragement into them. To go, God has a better and a new way and a different way for you. And so help us to be that, that encouragement for others, to be that love for others, to be that, that, that thing that people miss out on all the time. That thing that we call love, that thing that we called, that, that, we, that we look towards and we just go, God, I... You called us to be the hands and feet. Well, help us to be those hands and feet, guiding people into your kingdom. Father, we ask for a, for a refreshing of the spirit today. As we walk out, some of us, we've just been going through the motions. We've been doing the same thing over and over again, and we just need this refreshing of the spirit to just be poured upon us as we go out with a new energy, a newness about us, the old has been cast away, and now let us go out and, and, and just have that new spirit outflowing out of us into this community. Father, 2,000 years ago, 11, 11 men went out and changed the world with Jesus. Help us just to be a part of that in this world, in this community, in this county. Help us just be the, the start of what transforms Sassoon, Fairfield, Solano County. Father, thank you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray for, that we ask for, and we know that you're already starting to move. We all said, amen. amen. Really quickly.